How's it going, guys? I bet you, I bet you I could add screenshot and it would be fine. But I don't know. I'm having a great day, uh, despite the anticipation for tomorrow, May the 4th, my big start day. Uh, <laughs> I will say, uh, I'm a little bit, um, uh, I don't know what the word is. I'm a little bit surprised, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> that this May the 4th date has become such a big deal. <laughs> it was it was supposed to just be, yeah, why don't we start having some structure on May 4th? And now it's like a full-blown 16-week intensive, you know, boost uh, course, flipped course, and all this stuff, and it's got all the the good stuff that comes with um, with with thinking about something in terms of that. All the had somebody say in the chat the other day that they uh, were excited uh, that they were feeling that same sort of like first day of school anticipation. I was like. Well, gosh, that's a lot of pressure, man. I got to live up to the first day of school. Uh, I mean, come on. The first day of school is one of the best memories anybody can ever have, you know. And I'm like, on oh, the first day, uh, we're going to be like, and so I kind of want to just run this by the other the other mentors out there. The first day is going to be like, um, well, actually, there are no lessons or instructions or assignments or anything like that. We kind of just have a guide for you with some projects you should do and some books you should read. And we're here to help you. Now go learn. And I'm, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that, that people aren't let down by me turning around. Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm hoping that they're not completely let down by by like looking at themselves and going wait are you saying that uh that i could do all of this on my own so yeah that's exactly what i'm saying in fact eventually uh you shouldn't even need a community you should be able to focus and, and do all this on your own community is always really great by the way whether it's ours or some other one so so yeah so that's kind of what i was hoping to talk about today is like how do you bring uh a person into the mindset, and this goes for parents and people you're mentoring, as well as people you may be directly mentoring. How do you how do you help them? You know, flip on the switch that says, "Oh, this is about me," as opposed to it's not about the class, it's not about the the, the teacher, it's not about the school, it's not about the you know the day, it's not about any of that. It's about me, and it's about my learning and. And that's where it begins and it ends. Honestly, that's where it begins and it ends is with you. So, yeah, point us in the right direction. Give us guidance. And that's that is probably the you know, the most succinctly way to say this um, as a guide and as a mentor. I mean, um, so yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to turn down my uh, my video s uh, sound. Give me one second because when the Discord guys start to chime in, they're going to be a little bit soft i don't know why that is exactly but right, there we go hey thanks for speaking up giving me a test here can um you hear me yes i can you sound really good um yeah so, so so yeah that's all it's all fun stuff so i don't know what are your guys thoughts on this how do you get somebody who asks a question where where are all the lessons or where I see what do they say where is the first assignment where are all the lessons who are the yeah should we probably introduce them I mean now that we're gonna do this by the way um, this is officially the first mentor discord coffee chat that will go on YouTube so no swear words <laughs> we're gonna start posting these to YouTube this week uh, I am today uh, by the end of the day uh, I'll be. I'll start to post uh, stuff regularly to YouTube again, um, just so you know. So it's probably good that we go ahead and introduce each other, um, and I'm just going to let you guys talk. Who is in the chat with us? We have quite a few people. I don't plan on limiting uh, the general chat in Discord for Coffee Talk. Uh, if it becomes a problem, then I will. <laughs> but we can we can be pretty fast with our little with our little ban you know skills screams probably got much better band skills than me he's been doing this longer 
In fact, Scream, I th I've been thinking about doing this in the... Uh, you guys, just so you know, Scream, do you want to talk about your mentor skills a bit? The, the, the server you made? Are you on? He might... Is he muted? Is he here? I mean, he is on, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to talk. But he... Uh, he normally participates. So, but he, let me just go ahead and talk about it for a second. So he's shy. Today. He's shy today. That's not, that's not how I would describe scream. <laughs> but so I'm having, oh, okay. Sorry, buddy. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about it for a bit. And while he comes on, he can talk about it more. So he's created uh, a server and it's so much prettier than mine. Can I just say, look at how pretty it is. It's got all these cool little emojis in there. And, um, and so, you know, I encourage you guys to give that a shot. Uh, I'm actually going to put an invite to this server, if that's okay, Scream. Um, and, I mean, we, we toyed around with the idea of having the mentor community be a part of the RDBX, but it doesn't really make sense. So I'm really, really happy that he took it on himself to make this this server just for mentors. Um, and, and, you know, he's got a lot of official experience teaching. Um, so... Let me just see if I can get the invite. Where is the invite? I, I am a, I am a total Discord noob. I, I use Discord all the time, but I do not know it as nearly as good as you guys do. So I'm so happy I was able to just add streams and stuff. Here we go. Right click, get invite. Where's I guess I can't send invites, so we'll have to have uh, him send us an invite. It's the drop down arrow. Is it the arrow? I always, I'm used to clicking on here to get the invites, but I guess not. Okay. Change server, leave server, server boost stuff. It may be, it may be one of the, it may be one of the settings he's got going on. Um, so, uh, and I, I don't, I don't know. Hey, here's Bob. So I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna have to let Scream be just fix his, his sound good and, <laughs> and okay, and then he can go ahead and uh, can give get us an invite. Uh, you can post that in the chat anytime you want to scream if you have a, if you're if you're ready for that i mean i know he's 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 much more discerning about how he manages his server i'm like it's a wild wild west in my server uh and it's not even really my server at this point i've been named how many how many mods that i thrust upon you guys i just kind of <laughs> i just kind of gave you mod uh it's probably i don't know half a like six or seven people so, uh, but yeah, so returning back to the topic, I just kind of wanted to see how you think that you can move someone from the mind, mind thinking of it's your job for me to learn versus it's my job for me to learn. Uh, why are academic studies and skills acquired different from skills required from the industry? No graduate is ever good. Interesting. Uh, you know what? You know what? That is true. Why is that? Why is that true? Uh, <laughs> pull a classic lost your password and need to reboot through Grub. Something simple everyone can remember. Um, in fact, I'm going to go to the chat and see, go to general. Whoops. Hey, there's us. I wonder if there's any... I'm going to say, here's the homework you're going to give yourself. Sorry, did I just change something? I think I did. Oh, I'm so sorry. Am I? I would say it's probably one of the hardest things, actually, is getting someone to get into that mindset of they're the ones at the end of the day that needs to start learning the content and not relying on other people. Yeah. Um, I think I the autodidact approach, uh, teaching people about what an autodidact is, is... Uh, my yeah. opinion probably one of the best ways that you can go about it whether or not they actually accept that kind of mentality is up to them yes yeah. well Not that's really do anything past that point yeah i think we need to in fact uh just so everybody knows let me go ahead and pull that up um and and there are, are there are some really great resources on the internet and i again i don't want to redo anything that already exists um but in the overview he's talking about uh the autodidact stuff we're gonna go over that on the first week and the first day actually learning to learn um so learning is fundamental blah 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 and uh i think i have autodidact maybe it's not even linked here yet autodidact so if you go to rwx.gg autodidact 
autodidact. I want to tell you, I didn't even know what this word was until a month ago. I've been saying self-oriented continuous learner. And in fact, there has been a thing called an autodidact the whole time. So an autodidact is one who takes the learning into their own hands, either because they prefer it or are forced to for lack of other resources. An autodidact reads, writes meticulous notes, and executes tests to gain new knowledge and skills. Failure is an integral part of the learning process for an autodidact. To an auto. They don't fear it. They seek it and are intrigued by it. So there's actually lots of other resources you can read about I this. Penguin cheered. Well, I'm sorry? I could penguin cheered. I guess I should in bot and voice. <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, I, I just missed that last part. He cheered. He cheered? He oh, pro prove it. No, he <laughs> threw bits. The, yeah, uh, Twitch currents. Oh, so, oh, somebody cheered. Oh, Penguin. Oh, hi. Thanks for that. I like that you can actually see the cheers. That's kind of nice. Uh, this music isn't working, though. No. I'm going to find some piano music. You know what? Sax is great, but it's just... It's too distracting. <laughs> it's just there we go. Journey here's the journey of learning. Yes. At some point they will actually need to break away from needing to be told what to do. So how do you get them to do that? How do you throw them out of the nest? You know, Bob, you're you're you've got a lot of experience with people. Um some people are of the mentality that they need to almost be forced to push to learn something because they either feel intimidated by what they're trying to learn, they maybe feel insecure about their ability to learn, and maybe they feel fear to make mistakes unless they need to auto-assign an educational dictator or to feel... You know what? That is a fantastic comment. So thank you very much. That's a good point with um, the fear of failing. I think a lot of people have that, and yeah. I guess it's something you can't really understand or get used to until you actually start to do it a few times. Yeah, it's true. And so who are you again, by the way? People are asking. Uh, I'm OG Linux, sorry. Or Og. Hi, <laughs> Og. The voice of God. And here is Scream. <laughs> uh, can you guys give us like a one sentence summary of where you're where you're from and what you're about, if you don't mind? If you if that I don't want to dox anybody, but if you want to say so, I mean, I can introduce you, but you know. how about Scream? Tell us about yourself. Uh, yeah. So um. I'm Scream. I uh, taught uh, physics at uh, university for uh, two years. I recently had gotten my PhD, so um, fresh out of uh, academia. Uh, I kind of come at things a little bit of a different direction um, from a lot of the, the guys here. My um, interests are more along the lines of, um, uh, of computer science than um, uh, more uh, industrial application kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, which is good. Stuff I do. Wait, wait, where did you go? <laughs> did I kill you? No, I, 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 I didn't want to talk forever. You said one sentence, and I was probably five. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put somebody on the spot? Ask them to talk about themselves. <laughs> Tell us about you. Tell us everything about you in one sentence. What defines you? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, about... Go ahead. I'm uh, OG Linux, and I've only been really in the IT industry or getting into it for about four years now. Just recently finished my bachelor's degree majoring in software development and um, have always kind of classified myself as a learning enthusiast. But um, yeah, I guess recently, uh, you know, I, I like, I like so that. much you have to learn. So learning enthusiast. Wow. Well, that that's how I would, yeah. describe, I would definitely describe you as a learning enthusiast. Your personality is so enthusiastic. <laughs> Um, you. You're the kind of guy you want yeah. to get paired with when you're like in a project. You're like, please let me get Og. Please let me get Og. <laughs> I was very fortunate to have somebody who, my um, degree, who had been programming prior to the degree and was really interested in a lot of topics and got me interested in a lot of topics outside of school. Oh, wow. So it kind of made me realize how much out there people or how much out there technology has progressed and how much. Um, learning there is to do so i kind of accepted the fact that i'm an eternal student <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's really awesome uh a little bit of maintenance stuff here but being a student forever is like the goal right um so somebody is asking so we're still working out the the kinks in discord so if anybody has problems uh 
<laughs> Essential Maricopa. <laughs> oh, that is so funny and not true. Uh, how do I? So is there? Can I? Can I turn? Yeah. Do I? Or scream. So how do I? Should I? Should I boost the 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 volume of all of Discord? Is there? Does Discord have a volume? for chat for everybody yeah so what you can do is um good training uh, i guess settings mm -hmm. uh, just the general settings yeah well let me go ahead and bring them bring you guys up a little bit more there try it. actually i've got you on max volume at this point oh so. there's a general volume there's a general volume general volume i mean I don't know. Let me go see. I, what I'm afraid is we're going to accidentally play a video or something. It's like I already fixed that, but I, I mean, we can, this is good. This is good. Practice. My audio also might be bad because of using a webcam I got from the EUA center. I don't know. You sound a lot better now. I think I finally turned everybody up. I just kept pushing the up volume. So I think I just had you guys soft volumes. Good on your end. Volume check. Uh, and these details, I got, can I just say, I think they're, I think they're, kind of part of it um it's louder now okay um i don't want to blow anybody's ears out but i yeah all right so back to the topic we're just how do we get him started uh again i'm kind of selfishly interested in this topic because tomorrow uh i want to be able to explain to everybody that this is your gig this is your deal and Here's a bunch of stuff that may or may not fit into this time slot for you, um, but you'll make the best of it. Who's the guest? Yeah. Yeah, we just same same people as usual. Og, uh, scream and zeros are on right now. Sometimes we'll get Ramingo, but he's not on today. So I, I, I kind of want to go back to something that uh, was said in chat, and I think it's uh, sure relevant to, to the conversation, and also some things that I've. I've, I've seen in chat and I've just seen like more generally with people that uh, are trying to learn things. So uh, King was talking about um, people having a particular mentality that requires them to be forced to do things. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of um, difficulty that people have with learning is centered around their, their mindset. And um, a lot of the um, ease or um, uh, expertise that people develop in being able to uh, learn on their own comes from mindset. So there's yeah. kind of these two camps of thought when it comes to the mindset that you have when approaching learning there's um, what's called the fixed mindset and the no notion that you have sort of like an ingrained set of talents like you're born with them and they're, mm -hmm. they're um, not things that um, maybe maybe they can be developed to a certain extent but you're the people that have a fixed mindset tend to think that like I'm a smart person or I'm a clever person or I'm strong mm -hmm. um, as opposed to somebody that has an open mindset um, who believes that those are things that you can develop and things that you can improve upon. And right. a lot of the sort of fear or apprehension to learning comes from having this sort of fixed mindset and then looking at yourself as somebody who is not capable of um, doing certain things because you don't have those inherent talents. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I've seen in, in chat sometimes, it's, it's kind of hard because you don't want to, it, 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 it's hard to, because you, you don't really want to like directly confront somebody about something like this because mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like a um, a nature of their personality you can kind of push them away a little bit more when you're like no you're wrong about this kind of thing mm -hmm. you know? what was but the you one, what was the one besides fixed yeah, that you mentioned you uh mentioned? fixed versus um uh growth based or open mindset fixed based or growth okay open uh, uh i think growth. growth mindset is actually the, the terminology people Years. okay yeah so that you know that is funny i think that's uh i encountered that actually you triggered a a um uh a thought that i had about somebody that i was mentoring recently um and was a little bit frustrated with because i mean they're younger um but they they really couldn't get over that they couldn't it's not my thing. It's boring. I don't want to do it. So, I mean, at what point yep. is, so this is going to sound somewhat controversial. At what point do you say, well, that's actually true. You suck at this. You should not do it. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of, and I try really hard not to be cynical about this. Kind of yeah. Stuff. Um, but there comes a point where it's like, I can't keep dragging you into something that you don't seem to have the, the real, 
the real genuine desire to do mm -hmm. and um that you 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 kind of just have um a desire to have the end result like i want to be an engineer i was the one that i saw more more often but like, it comes into like i want to be a programmer i want to be a game developer i want to um be a hacker it's like yeah you want all of these things but like you you don't realize sort of the the reality of what it takes to become that person and you're or you do and then you're resistant to wanting to do those things it's i mean mm -hmm. honestly it's something that's kind of confusing to me personally yeah because I, I mean like, i don't i don't understand it because i guess like i i understand on some level that when you're trying to to gain those kinds of talents there's a lot of hard work that has to go into it you're going to be really frustrated you're not going to know what to do um there are points that you're like screw this i'm going to go do something else i'm going to give up but that's mm -hmm. kind of like the nature of the thing um yeah but i also think that there's there's something in youth that you know it's, it's hard for me to say because i don't really remember how how much i was um somebody with a a, a fixed mentality uh but yeah I, I do think that it's it's something that um you're not going to be able to talk people out of um but i think it's a good thing to focus on the base level because you're talking about like beginning with um learning how to learn um mm -hmm. thinking about the mindset that you have about about learning in and of itself i think it's like that's base level thing if you're trying to approach something like like the things that you're doing with a closed mindset you're not going to get very far because you have to you have to grind that you gotta uh you know push past what you're comfortable with yeah and I think I think a part of it too is that it's it's it's, it's part of the whole imposter syndrome versus Dunning Kruger conversation, mm -hmm. which yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's like at what point do you you actually do know it and you just don't know you know it, and then you don't know and you think you know it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I bet that M theory has a comment in certain areas. People tend to think they need some kind of special ability to work on that area, like like you need to be good with numbers so you can work in math. Uh, I thought like that when I was younger because of a teacher who enforced that mentality on me. Uh, now I'm a master's in physics engineering. You just need to work. So, so I that sounds like M theory's got kind of a growth mentality. You know, like he mm -hmm. naturally believes he can do something given enough time and, and effort. And that that is something that up until very recently I thought most human beings were born with, and that they just. But I think it is is a learned behavior more than a. I don't know, more than um, I don't know. Is it is it innate or is it something that can be can be changed? Are there just it's some people that are question. just what's that? It's an age old question. Yeah, um, I think that uh, I I mean honestly I, I move a little bit more lately in in, a, in an innate direction, and uh, yeah. I'll say the reason why is uh maybe a little bit of a pushback against against being around people that are too far in the direction of growth mm -hmm. and that that people are capable of growth i think that people are capable far more capable of growth than they think that they are right but a lot of the contemporaries that i had believe things like anybody could be albert einstein anybody yeah. could be richard Feynman. right and i think that there is an innate part of it that you know maybe if we're lucky we have we have people in chat that are like superlative on on that extreme that can achieve uh, on that level but the fact that like you don't it's rare to find people that, that achieve like that yeah so i i find it difficult to, to to understand that somebody would say that anybody could do that i think anybody can do a lot more than they, they think they're capable of mm -hmm. so I, I think it it's it's disingenuous to tell people that you can do absolutely anything but it's also imperative that we convince people that um they're they look at things more from a growth standpoint because they're going to be able to do a lot more yeah yeah, uh, Penguin Punch, Punchy Penguin says, "I believe it's innate, but in degrees and circumstances." Um, I just uh, Artification's got a comment too here. If you're mentoring someone, which is someone they're paying for, and then decide it isn't for them to walk away, they still end up learning something. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm glad you said that because I have like you know six or seven years of experience with that specific thing, and a couple times uh, this is why I would have such a breadth of exposure. The uh, um, I'm out of my comfort zone a little bit on this thing that's coming up uh, tomorrow because it's so specific. Usually when I start a mentoring thing in technology, I 
particularly because I'm dealing with young people, I have a, a sample, I have a platter, platter of things to try. Here's, you know, engineering, here's machine learning, here's this, here's this and this. And they sample everything and they decide what they want or don't want. And, and if they don't really latch on to something within the first 16 weeks or something, it usually means that it might not be for them. And I have one quick story where one guy came, I think I've told the story before, but he came to me with, with pink hair uh, one day and he came to me, it was back when I had a classroom, and he, he, he came to me and he was kind of like sullen and everything. And he goes, he's a great kid, son of some really talented technologist, very talented technologist himself for, for a young person. He goes, Mr. Rob, can, can I do hip hop dance this semester? <laughs> <laughs> like he had to ask me permission i'm like dude sure totally go for it yeah. thank you thank you so much thank you so much i'm like what are you asking me for i'm not you don't have to give permission so too, uh, you know because felt, he like compelled to be like is it okay with you it's like you're not gonna hurt my feelings by following your goals i mean there were probably a good four or five years in high school i never did anything with technology you know i was too busy skating and dancing and band and all that jazz so yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, Boulevard. Not to, not to draw away from the uh, introductions for Arch and Zero if they still want to do it, but um, oh, I do yeah. want to go back to Punchy's uh, comment earlier about um, it's hard to admit that you don't know everything. And I think, like with IT, you really have to accept early on that you're never going to learn everything about IT. I don't think there's a single person on no. this earth who could say that they know absolutely everything. <laughs> it changed too fast. Um, yeah, Every exactly. Day. I mean, things are constantly changing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, who do we have? We have a visit from Artibek's wife during our. What are you doing? You're taking out no, my dad. Taking out your dad's. Uh, do you have? Oh wow, she's actually rinsing my coffee cup for me before she pours me new coffee. People, may you have an RWX wife? Okay. Can I just say? It was really funny. We what? Were watching ETC news. Yeah. And I didn't understand something, and I started complaining. And then they literally said, "Okay, let us explain." If you're at home sitting there watching with your mom, <laughs> and you were watching and it then, with your, and then Otto wrote, "Thanks, I'm watching it with my mom." <laughs> and they explained it. And I was oh, there. she's the best. She's down there watching ETC news. You guys were a big fan of ETC news, so I'm sorry. Go back to what you're saying. Perfectly said. Okay, yes. You can do dance, but but only if you build the audio service yourself. <laughs> does uh, does Arch? I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but does anybody else in the chat want to introduce themselves? If so, go for it. Uh, yeah. So I um I'm Archification in chat. Hey, that's me. How's it um, going? How's it going? So, uh, been getting into Rust programming lately. Oh. Been running Arch Linux for a couple of years now. Started with Pure Debian on a server a while back. Uh, when I was in high school. Nice. So, yeah, that's basically me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I'm just zero. Just zero. Just zero. Oh, I love this comment here from some of these names. I don't know if I can repeat. <laughs> we'll just say resin. Uh, I often describe myself as a persistent idiot. I don't give up trying to learn. Uh, you know what? I think that's part of this men this growth mentality. And this is, you know, I've made the claim that, um, and, and I don't have any objective evidence for this, but I feel really strongly that it's a good sign if you have imposter syndrome, if you don't think you're good enough, if you think inside that you're a little bit of a fraud, that there's always more for you to yeah. learn. Yeah, I think it's generally a good you symptom. something a while ago that I thought was interesting, Rob, and it was, it was kind of along the lines of like, nobody's ever completely... In, in a state of like they, they might be in a state of but the, people are a combination of like imposter syndrome and um uh Dunning -Kruger, Kruger, DK, yeah. kind of like move between the two and i think it's like it's important to to kind of live in the space on the line of both in a way yeah because you want to you want to be confident in your abilities but also looking around at your peers and being like these guys are a lot better than i am i need to work yeah like yeah you, because you don't want to be like the person in the room who who knows the most because like if you if you get to that point it's like i need to find another room because i'm not going to learn very much from, from the other <laughs> that people. is at the very least like you want to be helping them. yeah that right. is an entire discussion right there how do you keep challenging yourself um that's just that's a good we almost need to be sharp uh brings up a good point uh with what criteria 
should he have in finding a thesis advisor or mentor? I think the most important Back thing, especially in my learning, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, especially in um, my learning, is find somebody who inspires you to want to learn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I you I'm know. Clear, almost on a fixer level than that, find somebody that you can, you can chit chat with in a way that is. You might not go out and have beer with your advisor because you know that's a little bit more friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to, uh, you know, go out for drinks with my advisor after a couple of years, but like that's the kind of thing that you're you're looking for in a personality. I think that in choosing an advisor, even even then, this might be a little bit controversial in a way. Mm -hmm. I almost say disregard the topic that the person works on. I mean, it should be generally something that you that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. And I've, I've seen this before. This is why. Why I say this. If you want to do something very specialized, like uh, like string theory is probably the best example that I can think of. <laughs> That's pretty specialized. Um, when I was um, at Texas A&M, there were only a handful of people that did string theory, and they were terrible advisors. Mm. Like they would they would chew through graduate students. They yeah. would parade them. They'd um, uh, not hold on to very many at all. But a lot of people still ended up trying to work for them because they wanted to do string theory. Um, I was interested in theory, but I, I had been in that department long enough to know I don't want to work for those particular people. So I had done um, phenomenology instead. And so I was fortunate because I found an advisor whose personality really matched very well with mine, who was very um, outgoing and gregarious mm -hmm. and curious and um, I think probably in a way the, the problem with the string theorists is they had a fixed mindset and they, a lot of them were like, you're not good enough for this. You're yeah. not smart enough for this. And well, they would do that sort of thing. No, we, we never run um, into that in the Linux community ever. Yeah, never, never. <laughs> so I, I think, think, I think in general. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, who we got cool AI around here? Sorry. You, you want to like find someone who you can see as a professional and as a person, right? Mm. There's a lot of people who you would say is maybe elitist, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Arch community, for example, has kind of gained a reputation of being elitist, mm -hmm. although I don't think all of them necessarily are. Yeah. But, you know, you want you want to have a person and a professional in one person. I love that. You don't want to just be talking to a wall that that knows what they know. You know what I mean? I'm going to I'm going to don't want to be intimidated either. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm going to invoke the right to steal on that think, comment. I'm going to put that in the quotes. So, Carlos anyway. also brings up a good point. Um, where what do you do in the case of if there's no one around that you know? Or like in his case, college, he feels like um, people only do the minimum. Yeah. I think at that point, you just have to turn to online to communities like yours, Rob, where there's just an ecosystem of. Which is completely accidental, by the way. This was completely accidental. It's oh, a happy accident. Thank you for your accident because <laughs> it has been so much fun and met so many cool people. All right, next. <laughs> what were you we saying? Somebody was saying... Somebody was about to chime in there. I don't want to cut them off too early. Say Somebody said, great advice. Thanks so much for moving. Debbie Downers from your life. Oh, that was a fun little thing we did one night. If you weren't here, that's a reference to a Saturday Night Live skit where somebody just, you know, always... Brings in the downer. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Self-assessment and preparedness is always a quicksand pit. Finding peers to talk to is super important. True. Wah, wah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, let's see. Because their they're install is 34 gigabytes. What's that about, Punchy? Are you talking about Arch installations? No, that's, I really like it. Um, let's see. Uh, Carlos says... I worked in restaurants for a while and never felt like an imposter. <laughs> I think it has to do with how much you admire your profession. Oh, that That is really blowing my mind for a second. Huh, what do you guys think of that? It's like, it depends on how much you admire or, or you respect your profession versus if you're an imposter. I think that's, that's definitely part of it, yeah. Um, I mean, do the string theory people of, feel like imposters? Theory. Oh, yeah. Um, so... When uh, the last year or two years, second to last year in uh, in grad school, I went to um, a summer camp called TASI, and it, and they alternate uh, year to year between phenomenology and string theory. Mm -hmm. They have some of like the, the most brilliant theorists, young theorists in the world, people who hadn't gotten their PhDs yet, but who were you know, a year away. Yeah, and we all had imposter syndrome because <laughs> we're all like we're all like so like super refined. Um, 
on what we're working on it's kind of like i don't know who it said uh, you're never going to know everything in it you're never going to know everything in physics either yeah you get free um into the specific details of something mm -hmm. um that you know there's about 100 people who are like the best in the world and we all were like listening to each other talking it's like holy crap that guy that girl knows a lot about this stuff yeah. and we we're all like we don't belong here right so it was sort of interesting to see that yeah and some of the best people there are in some have you have you guys found that some of your if you look back at the best friends in your life that that there was something about your relationship that made you like you you you, you I don't know. I, I I'm looking back at, at some of my closest best friend relationships, and I was constantly amazed by them. There was always something that always made me feel like, "Wow, I I'm so happy to be in your presence." And and yet I kind of felt the same from them, like like that they that they they like to be around me, and it, it just it's, it's very rare to find a really close friendship like that. And I I observe that in my my wife as well with some of her art friends. They they really respect each other. They're always like, "Oh, I'm so I'm so lucky I get to talk to you," you know. And oh, yeah. to go ahead. No, I'm just a friend. Yeah, it's just if if you if you can find that, it's hard to find that. I got to tell you, that's this you know accident things on the stream has been very soulmates. Yeah, I mean, and that's even better, right? If you find, <laughs> you know, if if you find someone that you love, uh, that fulfills that role as well. Um, that's really all it is. Which is funny because you know I've I've known people who have had friendship relationships that that border on soulmate relationships even though there's nothing romantic about them at all. So, but I I haven't had very many of those personally. My coding girl, <laughs> Emerald Qualities of the Hero. In physics, you feel like Dunning Kruger effect a lot. Uh, the max of confidence is in high school. Then you enter college to PhD. You're, you always feel like you know nothing. Physics students are the John Snows of STEM. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, to, 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 to further that, that, that comment from them, uh, and I think it's probably par it parallels the way that people would feel in um, technology too. Um, when you're, in, when, especially when you're younger in your high school, um, you're a lot of times going to be the best. Um, it's and it's something that sort of like it in a way reinforces a fixed mindset mm -hmm. where you're the smartest kid in the room but it's like you're in a general populist room so, mm -hmm. and you're spending a lot of time on your own to like develop these skills so for me uh, along the lines of what em said you know i had i, I was high on my horse when i got to college uh, mm -hmm. I took the ap test i taught myself how to how to do them i got fives on them and Mm -hmm. um, you know, I come in and I'm like, yeah, physics is no big deal. And even like my first semester where people were struggling on it, I was doing well. I, I got A's in both semesters. And then like mm -hmm. I went down after that. Like it, it was it was downhill until like junior year when I failed a semester of physics. Yeah. Um, a lot of that was like me being like, oh, yeah, I know all this stuff. Yeah. I don't need to study. Yeah, I'm a smart person. You know? <laughs> and the things that kind of get like reinforced by observations of your environment where that is true for what you see um but then you're getting filtered on up into um uh, a smaller and smaller group of people who are more and more and more specialized yeah and then suddenly like you're the worst person the <laughs> yeah so i think it's something to be aware of and to guard again you're the smartest idiot on the farm punchy says uh walters g walters has got a, a question related to this about adhd um sort of um and so this is, I want to ask a question about this because I'm, this morning, actually yesterday, I went through all of my, I'm going to read his comment first and I'll come back to the topic. Hey, Robin, Tim, do you have learning suggestions for people with ADHD? And I'm going to rephrase that a little bit and you see, is there, is there a way, how do we mentor people with ADHD? I always stumble around various things, topics at a given time and end up replacing it with something new. Welcome to the club. Um, I end up <laughs> right. only true. having basic info about various topics. Uh, due to this, I feel like I really have no solid foundation on anything. And if, if uh, just the quick thing, yesterday, if you saw me like hunting through my hundreds of repos on GitHub and GitLab, like 90% of which are unrealized starts of something, um, you know, I'm starting to think I'm actually clinical ADHD and people joke and call me that. Uh, I actually think I might have it, like legit <laughs> have it. And I just don't know it. So, what do you do with that? I think it's... Yeah, I always thought I was the same as well because 
quite often I'll get real into a topic and then I'll either discover another topic or get really burnt out on a topic and want to shift to something else. Yeah. Um, but I quite often find that shifting to something else actually helps me um, not only uh, yeah. relearn things, but also um, it's important to go back to those things that you shifted from. I yeah. find that quite often there's too many rabbit holes that I go down and then I end up yeah. diverging from what I was originally trying to right. learn. In college, I had the opposite problem too, though, which was I wanted to focus on something really well. I would write a 25 page paper for a 10 page paper requirement because, and I would, you know, get a B in the other class because I was so into that topic. And so I, I guess it goes back and forth, it goes both ways. Um, anybody else have an ADHD uh, um, kind yeah. of thing? I mean, I, I have ADHD, and it's kind of funny because um, I finished all of my, all of my graduate work, everything uh, undiagnosed, and then uh, uh, my sister actually mm -hmm. was in medical school at the time, like learning about these kinds of things. She's like, "Yeah, you should get checked for that." Uh huh. You know, why not? Um, so I've been I've been on uh, on Adderall for the last couple of years, and it makes a big difference. Um, yeah. But I, I would say that. Um, if you suspect that you might have ADHD, um, try to try to go get um, evaluated for it. And I think that there's a lot of like negative culture around it because people will say like, oh, well, um, they're just prescribing kids, you know, stimulants that don't need it. A lot of people, it's a lot of, it's the same kind of thing. People don't really know and understand things when they speak like they do. Like, yeah. It's true, right? Um, it's but interesting. I think that there's a lot of value in getting evaluated if you if you think yeah that. i you know what that's that's a good point i i'm i'm i may actually take up your advice on that i i i know something's going this is a tough part for us in the modern age is you know there's so many things going on in our brain but at the same time we also understand our brains a lot better and i think this is a mentor topic because you know you have you have if you understand this is why if i were to get any formal education it would be in neurology or psychology because as a mentor because mm -hmm helping people identify these things and and learn to you know in the in the triathlon training world there's a thing called identifying your limiter and what it is is you know is it strength is it is it is it cardiovascular and what you do is you identify your limiter and you focus on improving your limiter what is the thing that's holding you back the you know, other things might be okay and mentally for a mentor i think as a coach, you know, my wife uses the term coach all the time uh, instead of mentor. It's like, you know, you're actually more like a coach. You're helping people stay motivated. Uh, you're helping them identify what they need to do. You're not running the laps for them, you know, <laughs> they're running the laps. And, and then you're helping them identify what their limiters are. And mentally, um, knowing how to identify a limiter and help somebody get help with it is, um, is, is a big thing. I've noticed that when I put earplugs in, that's kind of like my Adderall. Now, maybe I actually am clinical and I need it at some point. But, but just putting earplugs in, you know what the opposite of that is? Streaming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, yeah. You see me on the stream. I'm a disaster. I can't stand. I can't focus on any single thing. And yet I love it. I love jumping around like crazy to a million different topics. So, so is that bad? Is it bad to feed your... I, you know, I, I feel like being a streamer Mm -hmm. Having an ADHD or ADD and being a streamer is actually helpful <laughs> because, you know, your, your chat comes in there and they're like, hey, what about this? What about that? And it allows you to go through and answer all these random questions that people have and yeah. not worry that you're moving you're away lose. from the main subject. Yeah. Because there, there might not even be a main subject. There might not be. I, I think part of it for me, the happiness has come when I just owned that there's no subject today. You know, and it, we're really going to get tested on this to, tomorrow because I've got, you know, a strict subject for this 40 minute segment. We're only going to talk about this thing. And I think I can hold it for 40 minutes <laughs> as long as there's a break. But. But yeah, but there's some freedom in just saying, you know, it's entertaining to just let a conversation go. I mean, I think that that's just some, some, some of the old school entertainment, you know, drink <laughs> and talk, you know, or whatever. But it's also like, it's kind of a natural state of being for a lot of people. I want to, I want to go to something that, that, that was said here and, and address it because it's also problematic, but there's, there's a certain amount of like flow that comes from just going wherever the thoughts are taking you mm -hmm. um and i think that there's a lot of value to that however um there's also this sort of um uh mentality that people have where adhd is um 
uh, something that can be controlled with willpower, something that mm -hmm. can be controlled with um, with discipline. Um, people said the same kind of thing about sexuality. Like mm. somebody could be like, like you can control your sexuality. You don't. You're not gay. You're just not um, controlling uh, yourself, and you're you're choosing oh, right. to do these. So I think that um, and it it, it people I'm say that about, to, get, get people, to to your to your point. They say that about the, the the point is that like you can't don't don't presuppose to understand somebody to the point that they you can tell them like if oh. you're just disciplined about this because yeah. this is one of the things that I've I've been told since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like you just need more discipline. Yo, and yeah. I've always kind of fought against that because it's like you don't know me. Yeah. Um, but you presume to understand me. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm achieving things that a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. and they'll look at me like, "Wow, I wish he, I could do that." Well, so I, it's like, yeah. you know, you wish, but then you tell me I should be a different way. Yeah. So I, uh, like I guess I don't want to try to get too personal about that sort of thing. No, I that, love that. that. Sort of I love that you brought that up. People do that about depression all the time too. Just be happy. Oh yeah, same thing. It's like yeah. you same. there. You can't. There's there's you know, so there's and yet there you can. So at some point, you have to, there's like one one uh, side of. So I do think it's a, and by the way, speaking in terms of mentorship, um, you know, we were talking about finding a mentor, find somebody who inspires you to learn, somebody who's nice to you, doesn't talk down to you. Um, I guess it's really a, a personality thing, but as a as a mentor, I think it's having the skills having that skill that you just talked about is is something you want to develop in, in a mentoring relationship if you if you say dude you know just work harder um and you're if you're telling that to somebody you're kind of anti-mentoring them <laughs> right because yeah and and i don't i don't want to scare people away from taking on the mentorship role because they're afraid they're going to cause somebody to hate themselves or something uh it's a learning process just to be a mentor as well uh, and I keep saying, I think most people can find somebody who will respond to their personality. But then there are some people who don't want anything to do with people. And so they don't, you know, they don't, they don't do it. So, and I absolutely hate it when people say everyone should learn to code. This is a real popular thing in the, actually about seven years ago, all over the place in, in academia and in, in ed tech world and education world. There's like, everybody should learn to code because it teaches you how to think, you know, it's a Steve Jobs quote. And there's so many people that came. I was going to say ironic, considering Steve Just didn't, didn't code at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and a lot, of, but it, you know, a lot of people railed against that. Um, I remember reading one blog in particular on code uh, code combat, where they were like, "No, this is, you know, coding is not for everyone. It's it's you know, learning how. There are lots of ways to learn how to think, um, and and it might not be your thing, but it also means that you shouldn't be afraid of it too. So. Balance in all things, I guess. Um, lots of comments here. Uh, I'm gonna try to get to some of them. Uh, yeah, when you when you tell a depressed person to just be happy, it makes them feel worse. Yeah, let's not do that, people. Uh, I don't I don't believe in flow. The author of the term was was talking about extremely extreme achievers, not the common man. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting uh, conversation because I do believe in flow, and I don't know if it's just because I've experienced it, so I'm biased. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of in the direction of a fixed mindset, honestly. Uh huh. Uh, Bob says it's digging to the core of who someone is. You're helping them see who they are, and that's where I think the mentorship role really becomes. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know what to say that doesn't sound weird. Like like human, metaphysical, religious, guru-y. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's some aspect to being a mentor that is that is beyond the technical skill and even the basic communication and social skills and and i don't i don't need to i'm not meaning to say that you can't be a mentor unless you you know you can see into the soul of the people you're mentoring that's not what i'm saying <laughs> but if you know there's there's what is it that that makes mentors so effective in that regard um i, I think they, i think that's in a way exactly it, it, it there's there's something that's it's very difficult to put your finger on and mm -hmm. it's it's an intuition it's um you yeah. you were describing something a while ago and i don't remember exactly what the context was but um it was kind of like a you know it when you see it kind of thing um and it was related to to teaching and mentoring and it was yeah. it was a matter of when do you know when to teach somebody this 
thing maybe yeah or... well I, i'm actually being challenged on that um right now i just having an email exchange with someone who's like i think if you, you can know, uh, reach somebody that's sort of that connection you're talking mm -hmm. if you can reach them yeah i was gonna say um like in my case the reason why i'm so drawn to you rob is because you literally manifest a feeling in me that gets me excited and want to learn more and that's... i think that's why well, hopefully, I mean, I don't. There's probably some science behind that too. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I can say the same thing about many people who have been in my life, and I have talked about the mentors in my life. You know, I can name, I can see the faces of the teachers who I would consider who crossed over into being friends and mentors. Um, and I think most of us can trace the influential people in our life to that type of person. Um, Bob says, it's funny that being personal in our society isn't professional when the most effective people take their work personal. Hmm. Mm, that's a very good point, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, quoting for me is really messy. I guess it, it's when you really care about your work. Yeah, you know, and that, we talked about that being a positive and a negative. Um, you know, the, the general idea of passion. Well, maybe we could talk about that for a few minutes. Um, you know, passion. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's almost an hour long talk. About so, yeah, passion so, and motivation, yeah. right? So, um, this, it comes up a lot. It's I think it's still kind of related to this overall umbrella topic of of taking control of your learning. Um, people say, "Well, I don't want to take control of my learning. <laughs> I don't want to learn anything." Make me learn. I dare you. <laughs> it's like, you know, you it's can't. almost interesting because people want to be right about things. And it's like, I can be right about um, not being able to learn something if I decide that I'm not going to learn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's this whole manifest. This goes back to that question of at what point do you stop trying or where's the barrier when you um, hit with a person who doesn't really know, like, when to take that step of taking the learning to themselves rather than relying on somebody else. Yeah. I guess that boils down to whether or not they actually have an interest or a passion for it. Yeah. And, and that is really it, right? Finding your, finding your passion for to Twitch TD says, uh, for me, motivation comes to wanting to better yourself. Oh, uh, okay. Sometimes people just don't want to better themselves and sadly you can't make them. Yes. Yes, there's the voice of reality and reason right there. Yep. And I've run into this. I actually, I just this week, I had somebody say, I say, okay, well, when I start a session, it kind of throws people, but I ask them, okay, what are you going to do today? What's your plan for today? I ask them, what's your plan for today? And I've, I've given them a number of things to pick from, and they're all on a check sheet somewhere, you know, so we can track it. But then they say, well, how about this? No, I don't want to do that. Well, how about this? How about this? Oh, I'm kind of bored of that. Oh, I don't want to. I'm like, and then I have to have, then it triggers the conversation. Um, well, you know, you don't have to do any of this. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that kind of catches them off guard. I'm like, what is it that you truly want? You know, do you want a web page? Do you want a Minecraft server? Do you want to learn how to hack? Which of those, well, I really, I, I kind of want a Roblox server. Well, we're not doing Roblox servers right now. We're not doing Lewis, so that's not on the table. Do any of those other things still interest you? Well, you know, having a Minecraft server. Okay, well, to do that, you have to do this and this and this to get it. I'm like, okay, fine, let's go do that. So it's kind of like helping them connect the dots that right. is important. Because if, if they don't see where they're going, and I think some people would criticize traditional education as not connecting the dots. Um, I had a kid go, for, I kid you not, it's a short version of the story, but I had a kid go from failing to the honor roll in one year uh, because accidentally during a session his mom told me she's a good friend of my wife's um and she re she said the story to her and i'd accidentally said in there so if you want to be a game programmer you better pay attention in math and because i had connected the algebra and the function stuff to to computer science and you know computer programming yeah. and he made the connection and he shot to the honor roll and i i, I didn't even remember saying it you know and and so <laughs> his mom told Told, told Doris and um, and she told me and I, I love that story because connecting the dots provides passion and motivation and and I and that I think fuels this ownership of your education um, hopefully mm. hopefully you don't know 
Let's see. Carla says you should work in high volume, low quality mode or high quality, low, low volume. Um, high volume, low quality or high quality, low volume. That's a good question too. Are you talking about the stream itself? Are you talking about, about, because, you know, whether you're really, really good at one thing or you're, yeah, so that's, that's a tough one. Hey, thanks for the cheer. Uh, I, I've seen people who didn't guess at a, at a TF question on a test just because they didn't know the answer. You didn't guess. They've had bad experiences with mentoring. I imagine someone can easily make their failures external. In this case, blaming you for not learning, meeting expectations. And you know what, Piotr, I'm glad you said that because, and I, let me, I have to, I, we have five minutes left and I, I think this is, I don't want to end on a negative note, but I do, I do want to share a concern I have about going into this and I'm going to try to do it more, uh, more better <laughs> than, than I did on the chat. More better do. More better, the more better. I, um, uh, I've experienced this in the past and when people start to feel like they're failing or or they don't want to learn or they're being challenged with their learning or they're being asked to do things they don't want to do or they're feeling internal pressure to do things they don't want to do uh, they inevitably will lash out and scream I'm almost positive you have experience with this and oh, yeah. when they do the lashing out is almost always blame and the, the person who's <laughs> the closest Yep. <laughs> is 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 yeah the person who's the closest is obi-wan anakin here's anakin. you're holding me back he doesn't understand my powers yep. i have more powers than him he doesn't understand he's just holding me back he's the reason i'm having all these problems so this anakin syndrome or whatever you want to call it mobet is is dangerous and um usually it's even worse when the person's really smart uh, sometimes if they're not smart and they're failing and they, they, they will still lash out. And so I'm a little concerned going into this because there's a, there's a, I'm not putting forward any expectation, but if people put expectations on themselves that they don't meet, uh, it's going to be really easy to get critical of what we're doing here on the stream. And I just, I, I tried to say it nicely. I, I was kind of stern in the chat and I said, look, I don't have any tolerance for ingratitude or disrespect. And that doesn't mean me. It means everybody in our community. So if you're complaining because there's a broken link on the site or if you're complaining because there's no assignments or you don't know what to do, um, then there's something wrong and you need to look inward and try to figure out what it is. Because at the end of the day, we're just a community here helping you learn. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. But if anybody has any suggestions on how to better, how to better communicate that, that would be great. More better. Yeah, uh, I have two two thoughts on that. Um, the the first is that um, a part of part of that comes from uh, the fact that a lot of times younger people and learners don't know how to how to express themselves in the most. Um, gracious way yeah in general they don't but yeah like yeah or they, and they'll, they'll say things that they don't mean to come across a certain way but then it definitely does um and so i try to uh, and it's hard it's really hard because it'll piss you off mm -hmm. um when you get like yeah. emails from kids that sound like it's demanding or um yeah uh, you, you know what i mean but um what, so what I usually try to do is I try to message back and say, like, this is the way the thing that you just said sounds. I don't think that's what you meant. So that's something you might want to work on. Oh, um, that is a brilliant piece of advice. I, I have to write that down. That is. A, oh, my God. That is so yeah, brilliant the, to that. Um, I've, I've never done mentoring, so I can't really um, I don't really have much room on that topic. But uh, for me, it kind of seems like the mentality that a lot of gamers have. Um, yeah, the way to obviously improve, especially in team games, is to not think critically of your teammates, but to think critically of yourself and think, "What could I have done better?" Oh, not or, not me. Um, God, there's so I much. Wrong? There's so much evidence. This is why I don't play games lately. Because <laughs> when yeah. I play games, I am a disaster. It's like, dude, you know. So anyway, it sounds. Yeah, I love. I just want to. I want to restate that scream. So, uh, so when you feel like you're sort of getting that lash out you're like now listen it you see so you reflect back to them and says it sounds like you are blah 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 you might want to be aware that to me it sounds yeah sort of angry I think it's just a of honesty with them 
because it's yeah. like there's a lot of times when like we're not it's not that we're, we're dishonest but we withhold the way that we feel about things so uh -huh. like when somebody says something um you don't tell them exactly how you feel about it because you're like i don't want to make them feel bad about about something but right at the same time you're kind of it's a teachable moment it's, yeah. it's the opportunity to be like this is the way that this thing sounds to me and a lot of times even when i said this kind of thing it's i, I add to it and it's like uh, you want to work on this kind of thing because when you get out there in the real world and you're um, messaging your boss you don't want to sound like that yeah 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 oh 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 that's great uh and that's and that's how that i've done some of that when you yeah out there you don't want to sound like that kind of thing yeah um, and, and that, you know, the few times that I, I, I sort of push back on people when they're asking questions that are really obvious, it's always with the intent of them not making that mistake in the workplace uh, or, you know, some, someplace else. Situate, wait, Green Jenny has got something. Situational behavior impact is a good feedback model. See, here's someone who probably knows. See, I, I've never been trained. In such a, in such a, such a situation, when you do this, here's what happens. Hmm classic feedback model I'll have to research that one some more um yeah just like stating what it is the more I talk the more I confuse my team the principal engineer seems to calm my head and understand me I just need to learn to translate it so they don't need to translate you know that means that's that's like a really important point um mm -hmm. we are not covering a communication uh but it is so important I would say it's on equal uh, I don't you know what. No, I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say I don't know because I know people at IBM who have zero communication skills, but were, oh, wow. Thank you, Punchy. But, but who were, um, you know, people who had zero communication skills, but were spectacular, um, f at getting stuff done and focusing and they would lock them in their door. They wouldn't dream of putting that group of people in an open floor plan, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, leave, leave people, like, realize people have different personalities yeah. and the way that they plays into that. And you don't want those people around other people because they're going to be unhappy. Yeah, and so so I I'm not going to say I stop myself just short of saying everybody needs to learn to be a good communicator. Or you can't be a, a functional in the workplace. Well, I just kind of proved myself wrong by re remembering and you know some people at IBM that IBM had really learned how to treat well you know, IBM has made a lot of technical mistakes and I've said this before they've made a lot of mistakes over the years you know with their business but I tell you one thing they understand they understand smart people they've been you know working with smart people for a very long time and so institutionally they another one was AT&T Bell Labs they really really knew how to deal with smart people Palo Alto you know at Xerox they knew how to deal with smart people uh, and bring out their um, even though they didn't fit um, into some of the other this, the other people who have you know communication skills the whole was you know Steve was next Steve Jobs kind of partnering so I guess as long as you have a mentor who just understands how to communicate with you and can ignite the passion in you but it's 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 not so much lighting the fire in you as much as helping you light your own fire by finding out what it is that lights your fire and, and stuff. fan the flame a lot of time the fire is there already you just have to kind of help people realize that it's there i think to go back to something that, that rob had said about like the kid asking if he was allowed to do uh hip-hop dance like that fire is there like the yeah. kid wants has the, oh yeah e even to the point that like he's willing to ask an uncomfortable question I know. himself yeah. to get the permission to be able to do what he inherently wants to do. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's something that um, uh, just we talked about, like, yeah. like the fire and the flame. Uh, but getting uh, permission, uh, let's talk about that. How, how often do we not even, you know, giving yourself your own permission uh, uh, to, to follow your passion? You know, it's like, last night as i was drifting off to bed um i i told my wife <laughs> you know she's kind of groggy and she leans over and she's like oh how's it going honey you know and i said thank you <laughs> i was like thank you she's like she's like i was like what are you thanking me for i was like i don't know just like thank you for letting me stream and i'm like i'm not you don't have to ask me for permission to streaming you know it's like 
we have our own scripts in our head where we don't give ourselves permission to do things. We 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 have our own hang-ups that are not giving yeah. ourselves position, but it permission. But it's it's true, and we end up projecting them on other people, you know, or or we bring them from an older relationship, which is what happened in this case. My poor current wife, you know, gets a lot of scripts from my old marriage, unfortunately, because they're burned <laughs> into my brain. So, you know, yeah, see. Let's see, I'm driven, excited to work on the unknown, but I'm falling short being unable to explain myself well. Uh, bringing up a good point, poorly phrased, can die out until someone better verse can do it for me. I don't know if I need to slow down. Rehearse on a notepad, but hard to explain, it's frustrating. You know, that that is, I think, from speaking as a guy who speaks before he thinks most of the time, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, just pause. You know, maybe sit on those words for a while and 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 think about how to form them. I I am not the guy to ask about that though. <laughs> yeah, you know, I might like language, but I like language too much, which means that I is. blurt it out. Yeah. Anybody else um, have anything else? Otherwise, we're gonna add to the giving permission thing real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I always love the quote of that Confucius says because uh, quite often I find that. Um, questions are the barrier to a lot of things mm -hmm. um, and it's always important to remember the man who asks a question is a fool for a minute whereas mm -hmm. the man who does not ask a question is a fool for life mm. yeah and that's you want to tell the 80 people watching what to expect for tomorrow uh 80 people watching wait for tomorrow tomorrow is the um let me just give you a hint here guys so tomorrow is uh, if you head out to rwx.gg, uh, you'll see. First of all, I just want to tell you this. I'm at a dangerous point on this site because the site looks built enough to start expecting it to work. <laughs> 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 you know, the, the, thing, <laughs> the thing about having a site with no styles is nobody expects it to work when they see it. They're like, oh, it's, okay, it's under construction. Yeah. But as soon as it starts to look polished, like, what the heck? This link is broken. What's wrong with this site? And then you become me, you know, reviewing uh, Try Hack Me, and it's just bad karma come back to haunt me. Um, so, you know, and I have multiple... Run, run that Muffet mob. What's that? Run that Muffet. <laughs> yeah, run, I know. I better run Muffet. But then I, Muffet just tells me all the stuff I haven't got time to finish. So I'm still... I want you to know, though, I poured it last... Yesterday, I poured it at some <laughs> 60 knowledge nodes over from Skillstack. Uh, related to all kinds of things, uh, computer languages and stuff. So I'm I'm working diligently on this today. What is it? Well, here's here's the overview. Uh, so this is the RWX uh, Beginner Boost uh, is a is a 16 week course designed for to target these professions um, uh, to you know boost you toward those professions. It's not going to get you those professions. Um, and here's the weekly topics, uh, we're getting started, knowledge is source, learning to work and learn, uh, running Linux, we're going to spend a full week on that, uh, that means, you know, WSL, VirtualBox, how to get started, and we're going to go through the Linux command line book, which is free, uh, all three parts in one week, uh, and that's going to be really fast, in fact, we probably won't be able to talk about each part on the stream, uh, but we will, you know, open up for questions during that time. And then um, we're going to do uh, Terminal Mastery on week, I, I stuck it on week, week six, uh, Linux command line bash scripts. Uh, we are not going to cover the whole thing in here in the book, but I suggest you do it on your own. Um, but I do really want you guys to be able to code in bash uh, early on because it lets you customize your environment. And I think it's very powerful. Um, and not a lot of people teach bash because it's, it's not a really good beginner first language, but... It, you know, well, up here in Knowledge of Source, by the way, we're going to learn uh, Markdown and J JSON and stuff like that. So you'll know data types. And what else? Uh, uh, networking and the internet. Uh, two projects here. We're going to make a Minecraft server at home and talk about how to do that uh, and go through all the pieces of the network that you need to understand. Um, uh, how to read a tech book. <laughs> we actually covered how to read a man page um, oh, some, some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> time zone uh, time zone is uh, Eastern time and so this is uh, actually I'll give you the calendar here in a bit so learning web design we're gonna do that whole book uh, we're just gonna do HTML and images and then we're gonna do CSS uh, we're gonna blaze through eloquent JavaScript which for most people will be their initial exposure to a programming language like a more of a, an official programming language 
Uh, and then we're going to do C after that. Nobody needs to despair. Uh, I've been toying with the idea. There are some projects in C that I think are going to make optional. Of course, it's all optional. Um, where, yeah, RTFM is really... And we're gonna, that's the first week, by the way. We're going to RTFM the first week. Um, and then, and then I'm, I threw Go in here too because I just feel like having a practical workhorse language under your under your belt is 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 gonna you know gonna be valuable going forward. Um, I don't want to talk about debating why the languages aren't here and stuff. These are just the picks. If you want to understand why those languages, there is some breakdown here. Here is the calendar of the oh, actual days. So here's the days that that we're gonna be. So next week is week one. So if you want to map the week uh, to the time frame. So if you want to you know tune out until you come back. Uh, I plan on rotating this thing uh, three times a year. And so May fourth is is now officially a tradition. Um, you know, and next year if if everything goes well on May fourth, we'll start another one. Uh, but we'll have two uh, between now and then. So it'll be just repeating. I just continue to repeat. Um, and then with the breakdown, so we'll have, we do a welcome 11, 11, 10, we'll start a segment one. We're going to break into uh, three 40 minute segments. And uh, those are just conversational segments, which means that in some cases I'll be showing you something that's not covered, but in, my goal is to have everything cover, whether I make a video about it because there's no book on it uh, or, you know, whatever. I want you to be able to to cover all the material on your own so that in this flipped course a flipped course by the way is when you do all the work on your own and you come prepared to discuss what you learned and did you don't come to ask questions or have say show me how to do it you only come and ask those questions if you've already done all the work to try to do it on your own and that's going to be very hard because every time i tried to do this in real life people don't do anything <laughs> yeah but this tough it's it's they don't they, but they I also say that part of it is is doing the work where with with the group yeah um like yeah. doing the prep work for the background stuff so you know what the gist of things are and yeah. what it is that you're trying to accomplish yeah. and then coming to the group communally doing the work so it's like i'm stuck here i don't know what to do and, you know yes 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 and, and, yeah yeah i did this thing before and you, you start opening up the dialogue that way right and i really hope that that's that's what this becomes so and again we've got the discord and we have the switch chat so if if that kind of conversation doesn't happen live it can happen you know in in what is it called you know offline in in asynchronous time so people can do it in the discord and but just so you know guys there is a discord for this uh we talked about um uh, oh I, I need to move that to the bottom you're right somebody's complaining about the voice being at the top um, I don't know if I can even get there right now. My Discord's acting crazy. But all I wanted to say is there is a Discord there for you. There is a Discord specifically called Sessions, uh, which is designed to talk about the sessions and answer questions if your question doesn't fit someplace else. Uh, there's a few more Beginner Boost Discord chat rooms that are for uh, specific books and topics that we're going to be covering so that if somebody wants to come to that material later, they can instead of having to sift through uh, the sessions chat. The truth uh, in the sessions chat, I, I'm probably going to reset it at every boost. So I'll reset the sessions chat, reset the sessions chat. But the other stuff that's there, you don't necessarily have to do. Oh, good quotes and stuff, guys. Um, let's see. It doesn't mean I don't. Uh, but I'm, yeah, so this is the thing. You can work on your own. You can work with the group. You can work however you feel comfortable. I did run some numbers. This is kind of fun. El Ramingo is giving me some, because some, it's like the numbers don't matter. I'm like, I know they don't, but it's just interesting. So people can get a sense of the scope. We're going to do 16 weeks, five sessions a week, three hours per session, uh, 15 total sessions, 25 extra focus hours. So that's the expectation that you're, I, I know that most people won't be able to do that. But the, the pace is based on people that are spending. Uh, this is an actual intensive boot camp. And I don't like the word boot camp, so I didn't use it. But I don't want anybody to come into this thinking that they're a bad person or they're dumb because they weren't able to finish all the, all the stuff that I'm, I'm suggesting you might need to accomplish within a given week. Um, because, you know, 40 hours a week, this is, this is meant to be a big commitment. There's no way I can get through this material in 16, in 16, in 16 weeks unless we approach it that way. And I know that because I teach people privately and they spend one hour a week working on stuff. It's going to take them six years to get through half of this. Um, so, but some people want the accelerated pace and 
frankly, if you don't, then wait for the next one. <laughs> you know, there's no one he says yeah, you have to do. Or keep up the best you can, and you know, realize that the the fact that you know we're moving potentially faster than you can keep up might be a good thing because it gives you breadth of exposure. Even yeah. If you don't, you know, crock everything 100. percent Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, so 40 total hours, 40 40 minutes a segment, three segments per session, 80 total sessions. Um, that's 80 total sessions, 32 weekend days, if you count those. So that's 112 total days, which turned out kind of nice. There's a thing on, there's a hashtag 100 days of code. You guys heard about this? Mm-hmm. If anybody is not following hashtag 100 days of code on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, you might like that. There's a Twitter community called, is it hundred? I think it's 100 days of code. And it's a whole bunch about beginners that are just throwing themselves at it, building their own uh, learning uh, commitments and, and sort of supporting each other. Uh, just through Twitter, so it's a it's a pretty good community. It just turns out that we're very close to 110 days. I wasn't even planning that. 240 total segments, about 3,000 pages of reading. If uh, you don't have to have Twitter, but we are going to talk about how Twitter can be used to build your professional learning network. And and I, I do, was doing the hours, so this is 640 plus hours. Uh, that's a lot of hours, but you know what? That's not even nearly enough to become, uh, you know, what is it? 10,000 hours for become a master, uh, free code camp. If you do the entire program is like something like 2,400 hours. So, and you know, I'm not going to talk about my feelings about free code camp in general. Um, but their entire program, uh, is about 2,400 hours. So, so again, this is even this amount of work is, is, is only, uh, is really only, only getting you started and you know people are like what are you talking about i'm coding in nine languages for the beginning and i've got all these projects in my portfolio yeah and i and i absolutely 10,000 i know it's a myth we're not going to talk about that we're not going to attack the 10,000 hours rule everybody loves to attack it um but but it's definitely not 600 hours (laughs) okay (laughs) numbers don't exist (laughs) they're arbitrarily made up things um, I need to go. I need to get ready for my next session. I have six hours of private mentoring to do today. Um, and uh, currently I'm completely filled. Uh, but uh, if you would like to get on the waiting list, um, just give me private Discord. I don't like to talk about my private mentoring business on the stream, but that's where I'm going. So you know what I'm doing during the day. Uh, and so if there's... Uh, and By the way, if there's any other mentors, I actually... Let's before we leave this, I'm gonna spend two hours on this. So I'm gonna ask since this is Mentor's Coffee Chat. So today, today for the first time, um, I I had someone directly ask me uh, if they knew anybody who could do some work for them for money, and and I realized that potentially what's going to happen is uh, it's, things are starting to churn here, and HR organizations are starting to learn about this, and. They're starting to go, ooh, <laughs> you know what I mean, and 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 I've already had a couple people uh, ask if there's anybody who can fill a specific project re- re- position, and so I went ahead and I added. I, I'm going to get back to mentoring in just a second. So so I I added a a section in the Discord called business, and it has a place to post projects, uh, a place to post um, help wanted kind of things. And a lot of these people are okay, and I've dealt with other people in the past too, they're okay with um, paying less money for a haircut and they know they're getting their haircut from the local college cosmetologist. Do you know what I'm saying? They they like they like getting, you know, those they 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 are they're okay with that. My point being that I think it's it's that we're gonna start seeing more people who want to hire people who are just starting out because they have a project here or there they want to do. And those are the absolute best projects to get going on. Uh, if you want to team up and, and put do do a little project. I'm of course not involved in any way with any of those business transactions. I'm just putting it out there so you guys can post them. Uh, but to that to that end, um, after I posted that today and I was getting ready for coffee mentoring, I've been promoting trying to promote other mentors. Um, I'm thinking about adding a section under the business section that says mentors for hire. And um, because I think that we have a lot of people in our community who could actually serve as a private mentor to someone. Again, I can't vouch for them. I can't. That would be completely and entirely up to you guys. But what do you think? Do you think it's appropriate for me to post mentors for hire? Um, and like in the. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Would that be okay? And then just let anybody pin in there what do you think about that was that appropriate or yeah like having like a uh, a message board for job postings of 
variety of type yeah or, or like, like people who are like having subdividing it to like two categories one for like general business one for mentoring i think it's a good idea yeah general well we have the business one um but see there's a lot i think and i think other people could post in there and say look i need specific help with this and then there might be a mentor who can chime in so for example i'm just going to pick on one uh you know um m frank who's you know a big electrical engineer kind of guy i i personally want to hire him to mentor me in electrical engineering um so you know that's a situation that i'm talking about uh you know i there are some things that i would like to learn from a professional uh and i can't find a professional <laughs> you know it's like especially now right so add so, to that it might be worth having a people looking for mentors as well as the mentors yeah 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 for sure i mean that's that's kind of where i was going with this there's there's people that are looking for mentors and people are trying to find one and there's some some people on twitter who have asked this question before too it's like well how do i find a professional mentor well usually it's somebody you know it's not going to be generally speaking it's not going to be a job board uh it's usually going to be somebody you already trust or have a working relationship with but i think that you can establish that possibly online first um I'm a little leery of it because, you know, the legality of it and all that stuff. What if stuff goes bad? You know, what if people don't like each other and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't want to be blamed for, <laughs> you know, people having a bad mentoring experience. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of potential there because cause I know I want to receive mentoring for some people who know, I don't know, like I would hire Bob to mentor me in networking. Uh, or, you know, I would love to you know, hire like clandestine or Scully to mentor me in pen testing. You know, I have I have no experience in professional pen testing. Uh, I'm going through the learning process on that. So I would actually personally like to hire a mentor specifically on pen testing, and and I believe strongly that that um, that people's people's time is 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 worth money. Um, you know, I I volunteer a lot of my time, but but I also think that it's you know that if if that somebody wants to do that, did you see I did not I did not clandestine. I was I fell asleep. I went home. I went, I sat down and I fell right asleep. I'm going in full war here and I'm trying to get back in shape. So I'm kind of falling asleep earlier than I used to. So I did not, but I want to. This is the problem with mentoring, right? So I need somebody. You did some Shodan? Really awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Definitely a good idea, although I'd be sure to be watching by some form of moderation in the case of potential scammers. Yeah, and I'm, that's why I'm going to kind of hold off on it. I'm not going to add the mentoring stuff right away because I don't feel like I have a good handle on moderation of that of our entire Discord. And I, and again, once again, more time to spent on you know administrative stuff, but I think it could benefit. Well, maybe it's uh, it's an opportunity to apply some of the same sort of ideas that you have for open credentials, only more specifically for yeah. uh, mentors. Yeah, for mentors. Yeah, yeah. Boy, that's that's a big thought right there. Let's let's put a tack in that one for next week. Um, so an open credential for mentoring. Uh, huh? What would that even look like? I mean, because it's such a personal thing. A big area of conversation. Why don't we save that for next week? Uh, I really appreciate everybody everybody tuning in. Um, I, I get to talk like a radio announcer. I really like this. I think I secretly wanted to be a radio announcer. Or either that or I was in another life or something. I don't know. But I really, really appreciate having the opportunity to have this this community around and to facilitate some conversation. Um, what we got here? I'd like to give a shout out to sure. the chat. Everybody participating. Yeah. In. Carlos and Huang and yeah, and Bob and Mina and yeah, they're all there. Mittens Mittens has shared some pretty interesting. It's I we didn't able we weren't able to get to all the chat, uh, but we're um, looking forward to seeing you. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. And if not, you can also go. Also, like yeah. to just again thank you, Rob, for your time. As always, it's a pleasure to interact with you <laughs> and to have discussion and hear the thoughts around the chats discussion and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I sh yeah, I sure appreciate it. And and it's it's just, I'm, I'm going to continue to call it a happy accident. This has been a fantastic experience for me too. So. With that, we're going to take off. I'm going to go ahead and type my Twitch stop. Um, I am going to be posting uh, Artivix slash live slash coffee. Uh, eventually, that'll be a thing. And uh, we'll be able to do more. Uh, and I'm not, I don't think I'm muted. Am I muted? Did I mute myself? No, you're oh, still there. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe. I, I'm, Ringo's I'm like, I think you're muted. Not, not uh, raid Ash Fox. Shall we? Okay. All right, let's do it. Raid. He's worthy. Ash.
Fe zero uh, Fox. Let's see if it goes. Did it go? Did it take off? <laughs> Never. Ringo, you're yep, scaring it's me. All right, guys. I'm gonna take care. I gotta go get ready for my thing. See ya.